Welcome back everyone and good morning. This is your Wednesday, December 9th, early morning second stimulus package and second stimulus check update. I will be filming and uploading another brand new stimulus check update later towards this evening. That's when you can always expect them. But the reason I felt compelled to hop on here early in the wee hours of the morning, I've been on very, very little sleep just for you guys, is because in just the last 5, 10 hours alone, we've gotten so many more new subscribers and I appreciate every single one of you that is hopping on board and subscribing to my channel. So I just felt pressured just to put in that little bit more of effort, push myself to the edge just a little bit more, just for you guys and you guys only, because I want to show my love and appreciation. So if you do respect that, if you do respect that effort, all I would ask in return is to go ahead and smash that like button, give the video a big thumbs up, smash the like button. This will give the video an algorithm boost so more eyeballs will get on the video. So it's mutually beneficial for all of us. And if you have been considering it, I would advise you, I would recommend you to do it right now because this is such a momentous turning point. It's a really critical moment in regards to stimulus. I would recommend that you do hit that big red button also with the notification bell as well. I upload videos now every single solitary day. As you can see right here, I'm doing two just for you guys in one day. Just, this is my second one in just the last 12 hours, so just goes to show you that I love you and I appreciate you. So if you just go ahead and hit that big red button, also the notification bell as well, that we notified every single time I do make a new video. So what could I have to divulge and unveil in these early hours of just a regular old run-of-the-mill Wednesday? Well, it's actually a very interesting idea from a congresswoman that could actually be funding your next stimulus check. Biden has expressed and vocalize his support for doing something along these lines. So it could very well actually happen. So we'll see what happens. But I want to take a look at this idea. It wasn't necessarily a proposal per se. It's more stated in a tweet, but still a very interesting idea nonetheless. Also, if you don't remember, we are at a very critical moment because there's two Georgia runoff races that are also going to decide the fate of your next stimulus check. And what I want to take a look at is one of the races between John Ozoff and David Perdue, David Perdue being one of the incumbent Georgia senators, one of the Republicans that their seat is up for grabs. And so I want to take a look at John Ozoff, his challenger's stance on stimulus, because he could very well be the next senator of Georgia, or at least one of them. So I want to take a look at that, and I also want to take a look at that interesting idea. We're going to be looking at it in this update. So who's speaking up now and renewing their calls for stimulus? Well, late last night, Tuesday night, we had Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who is a very, very fervent opponent of Donald Trump, absolute Trump hater. She renewed her calls for stimulus and a way to actually cover the cost of your stimulus check. So Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has an interesting method for funding stimulus. She tweeted late last night on Twitter, quote, I am being told that including another stimulus check is too expensive. Fine, tax the rich and pay for it. Billionaires added $931 billion to their net worth during the pandemic. They can afford it. That is true. We saw the likes of Zuckerberg, Bezos, Elon Musk make billions and billions of dollars during the pandemic. She went on to say, P.S., they got a $1.7 trillion tax cut. We could start there. She also corrected herself. She made a typo when she said pandemic. So she did add pandemic and not pad memic. But at any rate, her method would be actually reversing the Trump tax cuts, the Tax Cuts and Job Act from 2017. And Biden himself has also shown opposition to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Many Democratic leaders were strongly against it because a lot of the benefits ended up going to the rich. Now, the lower class and middle class did in fact get a tax cut. Their tax brackets did in fact go down, but arguably most of the rewards went to the ultra wealthy and the top 1%. So she wants to totally do away with the Trump tax cut. What do you think about the idea? Would you be in favor of something along those lines? Let me know down below in the comments. We'll keep the discussion going. But Biden was pressed heavily about this issue. As president, would he in fact eliminate the Trump tax cuts? That was a large focal point of the election. And he had said that he would raise taxes on the wealthy, but anyone making under $400,000 per year annual income would not see a penny more in tax. 
So that was his stance. Now, whether or not that rings true, we have yet to know. He has not stepped into office yet. It does remain to be seen. But his claim is that not anyone making under $400,000 would see a penny more in tax increase. So Rashida Tlaib would like to see a total overturn of the Trump tax cuts and largely drastically increase taxes on the wealthy, tax the hell out of them, and that will easily cover all of our stimulus checks for anyone that is not in the top 1% will be getting our stimulus checks via the ultra-wealthy. Thank you, rich people. It's certainly plausible. It's not unreasonable. Remember Democratic candidate Andrew Yang, when he was calling for his UBI, universal basic income of $1,000 a month, he was always asked how he was going to pay for it. Well, he's going to tax the hell out of Amazon. So that would be his way of affording UBI. So if we could do UBI, we could certainly do a $1,200 stimulus check. And under a Biden administration, you will likely see a tax increase on corporations and the wealthy. So that could very well cover at least the majority of the cost of stimulus checks. So I'd like to shift over to the Georgia Senate runoff races. Super crucial uber imperative these races because not only will it affect stimulus and what a stimulus check and your next stimulus package could look like but also could affect biden's entire four-year term his first term it could affect legislation of whether or not it gets passed if you're living in georgia right now let me know down below in the comments the tv ads must be absolutely ludicrous millions and millions of dollars being spent here because these two races are going to determine the fate of so much for the future of this country because it will determine whether or not we have a Republican majority or will Democrats get the upper hand. So the two Senate incumbents in Georgia right now are David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler and both of their seats are up for grabs still because neither of their candidates or the challengers got a majority of the votes on election day. On election day it was not over so in the state of Georgia, you must get a majority of the votes or above 50%. And that's why it is off now to a runoff race, which is essentially just another election. It's just the same thing repeated. And that's going to be held on January 5th. That is when the Georgia runoff races are. So Senator David Perdue's challenger, John Ozoff, proclaimed his stance on stimulus and also attacked and bashed David Perdue's record on stimulus. This past Sunday, there was a Senate debate and David Perdue chose not to attend. And John Ozoff asked why he, quote, continues to oppose $1,200 stimulus checks for Americans. And he asked why he opposed them in the first place and why he wasn't championing the provision in Washington, D.C. Ozoff recently tweeted, quote, direct stimulus checks now on Sunday. And he has advocated for another round of checks for months. He also gave his stance on what he would do if he was in the Senate right now. He said, quote, if I were in the Senate right now, what I would be supporting is a legislative package that delivers immediate direct stimulus checks to the American people. He told that to MSNBC on this past Saturday. So if you want stimulus and you live in Georgia and you don't want stimulus to be thrown out the window, because if we have a Republican majority still come January under a Biden administration, we may not be able to see stimulus checks being passed. So I would advise you and advocate to vote and choose which direction you want to see stimulus go. Challenger John Ozoff also actually weighed in on the $908 billion bipartisan proposal, and he actually, quote, applauded the bipartisan spirit of the proposal, but did say that there needs to be immediate, quote, direct relief. And Purdue, David Purdue himself, his stance, he had said that he actually personally opposed stimulus checks, but in March, he voted in favor of the CARES Act, the $2.2 trillion sweeping relief package, the largest piece of legislation ever signed in U.S. history, even when adjusted for inflation. So to appeal to voters, David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, both of them actually reminded voters that they did support the CARES Act back in March, and they also called for, quote, targeted relief, according to this joint statement. And this does include another round of the Paycheck Protection Program and an extension of, quote, critical relief through the end of the year. The statement did not mention another round of stimulus checks though. This next Monday is the last day to register to vote and early voting will begin on December 14th. And just to remind you, if Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue lose their seats, it becomes a 50-50 split Senate. And that actually gives the upper hand to the Democrats because the constitution grants the vice president of the United States to split that vote and break it in favor and sway it one way or the other. So in that case, the vice president 
would be Kamala Harris. Now, I know many of you probably don't trust the polls, but the polls are actually indicating that one of those seats will be lost and one of them will be maintained and retained, which would mean a continued Republican majority in the Senate because they can afford one seat lost. The Republicans can afford to lose one seat. They'll still have that majority. So certainly some interesting talking points, some interesting ideas. The news is constantly, consistently changing. And that's why I try to update you guys as often as I can. And I feel even more obligated to do so now, now that the channel is growing. So I don't take that for granted. I love you all and I see you and I appreciate it. Stay tuned for tonight's update. Hopefully the news does change. Hopefully we do have some more developments because that would mean negotiations and talks are hopefully progressing. So let's hope for the best. And if you did enjoy this update, if you did, give it a big thumbs up, smash the like button. Also go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Hit the big red button. Also the notification bell as well. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon. See you in the next one.